Sarah Albadwe here from Horse Racing Nation for one of the last times for Horse Racing Nation and a pleasure pleasure to be joined by Jeff Bessa of Charting Horse Value. You were one of the first people that I did a video with prior to joining HRN, had to bring you back for one of the final ones and you partnered with HRN yourself. So what's it like almost, well, I guess a full year later to kind of, I guess, come full circle on this in a way? Well, sorry to see you leave HRN. I think you're a tremendous talent. Um, you've grown tremendously in your uh, journalism, your uh, video uh, professionalism, and uh, your handicapping is still, of course, very good. I'm doing great. I'm glad, so glad you invited me on for, I guess, your last show. And, um, you know, I'm going to miss you. I hope we can continue to work together and some capacity as you figure out your long-term future. Yeah, I'm definitely not going anywhere and I'm still around for uh, handicapping chats uh, at any time. So uh, don't worry about that. But we're going to be going over the late pick five on Saturday at Oaklawn Park. Some interesting stakes races, some comebacks of some horses that we haven't seen in a while. How do you feel about this sequence in general? Did you find it tough to navigate? Do you feel like there's some strong places you can lean? What do you think? Yeah, good question. So as I look at the sequence, um, first of all, I think the last two legs are very difficult. Uh, we'll obviously talk about them in more detail. So you're going to need to have some strong opinions early on in the sequence. Um, and the second thing is the first leg, race six. I think is uh it's a is not an easy leg, but it, it's a leg you gotta have an opinion on because otherwise you're just not gonna make any money on that leg and you're just risking your bankroll without making actually any equity, and you'd be better off just playing the pick four. So I think race six is a critical leg. Then you're gonna have to survive race seven and eight going kind of skinny, and then you're gonna have to open up a little wider uh in race nine and ten which I think are very difficult to handicap. That's just my impression. You know, what What do you see when you see the sequence? I agree with you completely that you have to make a decision in the opening leg. Uh, I see the ninth race. That's kind of my spot to lean more so yeah. than other places. So we'll we'll get into that a little bit more. But overall, I think that it's a situation where the final race is just a mess. Uh, and I think that that'll really be a place where a lot of people end up spreading and not having a super strong opinion. Uh, but I also think that to start things off in race number six, we have two short priced horses that I'm just not really sure about their credentials coming into this race. And I think that a lot of people are just going to go ahead and single hit show on the outside for Brad Cox. And it's just not really the direction I want to go in because the way that he won his debut, there was a lot of chatter about how he had this trip and he had to overcome so much in order to get the win. And it was very visually impressive. And then the figure came back and there was a lot more chatter about that because it was kind of low. It was only a 60 buyer for his debut effort. and. Coming back next time, even though he did improve his figure, he finished fourth and he wasn't able to overcome a lot of trouble in that race. He bobbled a little bit at the start. He had to sit off of the pace once again and come from a little further back. And maybe that's his running style, but to not overcome the amount of trouble next time out against horses that were a little bit better. I worry about him going forwards because one thing's for sure, he's going to be over bet. And he might not be that good. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, the second effort is pretty weak. Uh, however, it was an even effort. So definitely could improve third lifetime start. And is one of the few horses in here with uh, good two-turn experience. Um, and the cutback to a mile might not be bad. But I am concerned with, um, it appears, a lack of early speed. And you, in these uh, eight furlong races at Oakland, it's the early finish line. Uh, you definitely need to be tactically placed. And he might get floated quite a bit wide going into that first turn. And uh, it might be too much uh, for him to overcome with the, with the short finish line and the way this track is playing. 
by the way, I think the weather wise, it's going to be fast, but it's going to be cold. I think the high, it's a high of 45 and, and sunny, but the track's going to be fast. And I think speed is a speed is what you want. And that kind of led me to the number two in vulnerable because I really think that this is a horse that will be the speed of the speed. I mean, he went fast last time out, breaking his maiden here, to a respectable enough figure uh, for his first start with the fractions that he set. I worry a little bit about the practical jokes stretching out. I don't think he'll have to set the same kind of fractions that he did early, but I mean, you always have to wonder until they do it, are they going to get the distance? I think that with the pace advantage that he is going to have, he's definitely one that I want on my ticket. But I mean, it's not as though he's going to be lone speed in here. There's other horses that are going to sit close to him. And if he doesn't get the distance, if you don't like the favorites, I want a little bit more coverage. So I would go a little bit deeper in here. I would actually use four horses with the two, three, four, and seven. Um, just because my main opinion is that I'm trying to be both protege and hit show. And protege comes out of that Arabian lion uh giant mischief race both of those horses are going to be contesting derby preps going into this weekend so obviously was facing better horses however all the horses that finished far back of those two it's basically like they were in a different race and just not at all in contention with the top two finishers so I'm a little suspect of his overall ability and I don't like when a horse regresses significantly in terms of figures from start one to start two I don't like that horse at all. That six is a toss for me completely. Um, that second effort is very weak. By the way, one of the difficult things about this race is almost every horse in here is making first start on Lasix, uh, which is, you know, you don't know which horses are going to benefit uh, the most. Um, I like Invulnerable as well as my top selection. Now, what I'm going to give in race six, seven, eight, I'm going to give one horse – and I probably would play three tickets, and I would require two of those three horses to win. And if all three won, then I'm going to go all in race nine. But if only get two of the three, then I'm only going to be four deep in race nine. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. But my main horse is definitely the two uh, in Vulnerable, and I need you know one of the next you know him and two others to win. Or one other to win in this first three legs. My backup will be the eight. Uh, so when I do spread, I'm only going to go two eight. And uh, the eight, you know, looks like they had some trouble and, uh, you know, might just be a really good horse and maybe third side lifetime. But my main pick is the two getting speed, getting to the rail, and uh, hopefully to fin hold on with the short stretch. I like to hear it. Both of us having an eye on that horse going in here. We have our first stakes race uh, of the sequence next in race number seven. It's the poinsettia stakes. And you said you were thinking about going all in here. This is a tough race and I'm not super crazy about some of the shorter priced horses. I think there's some vulnerabilities with them. Do you have a top pick or are you just super spread out in here? No, no, I have a top pick here. The all is race nine. Oh, okay. My I wasn't clear before. I have a topic here. Um, this race is loaded with speed. Okay. Now, granted, they're going five and a half furlongs, and one of those horses may get the lead and, and hold on. Um, my top pick is the two. I really like this two. I think we're going to get all of that five to two. I think the odds might drift up a little bit. Um, the horse is coming off two fourth place efforts. But before that, this horse was extremely strong. I think the horse is ready to fire again and it's going to get a really good stalking trip behind. It's like four or five horses that are going to want to try to get the lead. Now the, my backup, if my two doesn't win is the one horse, which is the speed on the rail. Uh, I don't know if this horse really wants five and a half furlongs may only want five um, gun runner though. And at least if, when there's a mad dash for the lead, I like the horse on the rail. OK, and we'll, we'll not be going not get floated wide and hopefully is able to, to get there. But I'm going two and one is my backup. 
I have the same thoughts as you on the one. I think this might be the speed of the speed based on having to go from the rail. I like that this horse did come back with a win last time out off a little bit of a freshening. The jockey change doesn't really bother me since Isaac Castillo did win with her um, in her maiden breaking score, which was also her best figure to date. And I really think that it's just more of the intention with the post position here for me, more than thinking that she is truly uh, the fastest horse in this race, but the decision is made from the rail and there. Uh, you have another horse that will likely be close early, and that's the number seven, Pretty Birdie, who we haven't seen in a while. And last time out was really disappointing at Belmont. And I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, there was a shoe issue with her going into that race. And I yep. don't really hold the poor performance against her because I think the whole issue was that she wears glue on shoes, which are more of a specialty. And for whatever reason, whether it was the amount of time or the particular farrier, that wasn't an option going into that race. So she either ran with a regular shoe or no shoe on just one foot, which I think just contributed to being off and a little bit unbalanced and something unusual for her to run with. It concerns me a little bit that we haven't seen her since then, but I would say that that race is a total toss and to just um, look at her work prior to that, if considering her in this race. Um, but I'm going to go only one eight in here for me. I think that the eight I'm the boss of me will be able to sit right off of whatever early speed is developing right to the outside Caribbean Caper, I mean, facing males last time, okay, gets back in with the Phillies and Mares. Uh, the great success that this horse had, five for five in a row last year. Maybe you can say that she needed the first start off of the layoff, two back, and then obviously facing much tougher last time and might just be the class of this field and might just get the right setup. But I don't know that we've really seen last year's form translate into this year and I want to try to beat her while I still can get a price on other horses and while she's still going to be the favorite. So I would just go 1-8. Well, your comments on Caribbean Cape are good. Um, so on my charts, I give out the letter grades and occasionally I give out something called a spot play. This horse qualifies as a spot play. Uh, S-A plus, pretty, pretty likely winner. I agree, not as good a form. A little bit questionable form, but third start now off the long layoff. And um, like you said, going against the boys last time was a very nice effort. And this is, a, I mean, like I said, there are one, two, three, four, five horses going to be going for the lead here. Uh, one or two of them may get it and one may stay, but I think the two is going to get one of the best trips uh, she's ever had. So this race actually also gets a asterisk five asterisk race score. So five is the highest grade I give a race. So I'm going to trust my charts. I'm basically singling the two. And as a backup, I'll use the one, um, Ari Oakley, who I think at least uh, is the speed of the speed, like you said. All right. Well, can't be uh, too surprised if Caribbean Caper pulls this off. And I think that certainly the horse to beat, but I'm trying to be a little contrarian. And we have one of the horses that I feel like you were really looking at going into the Kentucky Derby and yeah. really a fan of his consistency prior to that in the next race returning since those uh, triple crown trail attempts. And that's Barbara Road, who is installed as the morning line favorite in the next race, which is an allowance are you going ahead and singling and trusting that he's ready to go off the layoff and the class of this field, or are you trying to beat him? Yeah, single. I mean, he's my single in the race. Remember, I got to hit two out of these first three. Uh, I'll tell you who my backups are. Uh, this horse, by the way, first time lay six. Um, and a horse has $600,000 of earnings this year. I mean, this horse is by far the best horse in the race. I am a little concerned of the seconditis, you know, a lot of seconds, uh, especially earlier in the year. But, you know, it was going against the top three-year-olds in the spring. There's nobody like that in here. Um, the other two that I looked at is the nine, disc jockey for Diodoro. Um, he's ha he picked this horse up for 25000 Really nice, hard-knocking claimer. Um, that's probably the main threat if Barbara Road doesn't get it done. 
But this is just a claimer. Uh, made $100,000 this year, not in the same league. And then the long shot I like is uh, Pat's property. I think she, or he, sorry, I think he might be lone speed in here. And the horse has held on for some nice seconds, um, especially at Oaklawn. So I think, you know, if we can get anything close to 20 to 1 like that, that's a great horse to use underneath uh, Disc Jockey and um, Barber Road. So I'm kind of looking at playing this with an exact and trying to get that uh, eight uh, underneath. What are you thinking? Well, you and I are uh, thinking very alike in here in some ways because I have my eye on Pat's property for sure. I mean, Kelsey Har, what a weekend last Saturday with getting so many prices home. Obviously, track conditions very different going into this weekend, but Kelsey Har has gotten this horse to the winner's circle at a huge price before last December, winning at 45 to 1. So has experience winning with this horse when he's been able to overcome his, uh, his odds on the tote board there. And if we look at his race last time and we look at who won that race, it's your eventual Breeders' Cup sprint winner in Elite right. Power. Yeah. So, I mean, with the early speed advantage, with who he's been facing lately, coming off a little bit of a freshening, I think this is a very live long shot going into this race. Uh, I don't have quite the same respect for Barbara Road that you do, but mm -hmm. when you do look around the rest of this field, I mean, there is no question that he has been facing the best horses consistently all throughout this, uh, this spring. And if he is able to get a little bit of pace to run at and overcome some of his uh, hitting the board finishes without getting to the winner's circle. I mean, he has to be considered, but I am going to try to beat him and I'll use U.S. Navy Cross, the number three horse, as well as the eight and nine in here to try to get to the next race and uh, hope that he uh, continues to run consistently, but hasn't quite gotten himself into uh, a winning position. Yeah, a couple of other comments. Uh, totally agree with everything you're saying. Barbara Road, I do like the rail draw. Um, some of the trouble Barbara Road's had is when um, he doesn't break too sharply and gets floated wide. Um, that's having watched a lot of his races. So he gets a really good draw here. It's going to definitely save ground in that first turn. I think that's a big help. We already mentioned the first time Lasix. I did look at that U.S. Navy cross. Um, you know, I just don't know, or, you know, just basically won his uh, second condition, not winners two other than in a $36,000 Remington race. Before that was running on the grass. And Broberg's taking a shot, but um, how did Broberg even get this horse? I guess claimed back in February for $30,000. Um, nice claim. Very nice claim. But anyway, yeah, I think Barber Road is just a class of the field, but maybe eight can steal it. So we're on the same long shot. And 21, not a bad price to have on our tickets as we go ahead to the other stakes race on the card in race number nine, which is the Tinsel Stakes. And this is where I feel as though we're going to have very differing opinions because I am going to go ahead and cop out with a single of the number three run classic, who is your favorite on the morning line. I mean, he did all the dirty work last time out at Churchill Downs in that uh, race where he was just pressed the whole way around the track. The horse that was pressing him ended up fading and finishing seventh way back from that group that was just swarming in on him. And he got beaten a nose at the wire by a huge upsetter in Farmington Road that just had a great trip sitting in behind, saving ground, and able to just nail him late. And I think that even if you're a little bit suspicious of that 105 buyer uh, two back going seven furlongs at Keeneland, and if, is that figure necessarily representative of his true ability? Are we going to see that replicated again? I think that the 93 last time and the 90 uh, prior to that 105, coupled with the pace advantage that he should have here and the gameness and just fight that he showed last time, uh, to me, I think that he's just very much the horse to be not having to go white as blisteringly quick early definitely the horse to be won't disagree with you at all i just feel like this race for some reason has the potential to pay huge i mean as i look at some of these prices okay hosier um silver dust scarlet fusion i mean 
these horses can win this race. This horse, this race is just not that good. Um, maybe your three is like the the now horse, and is definitely if you're going to single, that's the horse to single. But I just felt like the race looked a little bit more wide open. Uh, I'm hoping I hit all three of my singles and I'll be all on this leg. Otherwise, I decided to top it down to the one, three, four, seven. Um, so it's a tough race, very tough race. That's my. Well, I mean, if you take Run Classic out, you can make a really strong case for almost anyone else to yeah. get the job done. And so, like. Let's say at eight to five, he doesn't interest you. You're a little suspect of him being able to get the mile in an eighth distance. You want you want somebody that's a little bit more proven and less lightly raised. I, there's a lot of different directions that you could go in here. I just knew that there was no ticket I was going to make that wouldn't include him. So I decided that with my decisions earlier on, I would just go ahead and single here and hope that he is able to go a little bit slower early on and just control from start to finish. Yeah, good call. You know, t tough race. And by the way, every there's no uh, definitive speed horse in this race. Uh, on my charts, I give out F for a front runner, T for a tactical horse, M for a mid pack, and C for a closer. Every horse in this race is either a mid pack or a tactical. It's going to be a really interesting battle up front early. Who who takes the lead? What's the pace, etc. Um, gonna enjoy watching it. Me too, and hopefully uh, my single gets it home. And I know you'll be hoping for a little bit of a prize. As in the finale, the horses to single report for Horse Racing Nation actually goes here uh, wow. for a suggested option. And I looked at that and I said, "That's bold," uh, because singling in this full field with two also eligibles as well with a horse uh, in the nine one way or another that's six to five on the morning line. What am I supposed to like so much so about this horse that I'm confidently singling this one at six to five? And I looked around at the rest of the field and I was like, all right, what am I supposed to really like about much of the rest of this field? But th there's no way that I'm just going to go ahead and single the favorite when there are so many interesting alternatives at better prices. So I would use a couple of horses here. Um, with the decisions I've made earlier on, I would still include one way or another because I don't think that that's a horse that a lot of people are going to just single and that's going to be it. Um, so I would... I would give a look to 2020 Redo, the number eight. I would give a little bit of a look to the 10 Chai T at a huge price for Kelsey Har. Um, even the number four, Tap It Right, coming off a little bit of a break is one that I'd want to include on my ticket. I don't have any super strong opinion in here. This is a wild way to end things. Yeah. <laughs> so the condition on this race is a allowance of as Arkansas bread, first of all. $104,000 Arkansas non-winner one, non -winner, one other than allowance. I didn't even know this has got to be a first, okay? <laughs> if you look at some of the Arkansas breads in here, and some of them are coming off extremely long layoffs because the last time they ran was against Arkansas breads, and there's been no racing since Oakland ended. So just as an example, uh, Derby de Lassie is an example. Horse hasn't run since 6th of, uh, of May. However, you look at those races, optional claiming 20K, optional claiming 25K, I don't know what those purses were, but I doubt they were 104,000. Um, this is a hard, hard race. I am six deep if the 13 draws in, and I don't even have any of the horses you mentioned. So <laughs> this could be an all. I have the three Derby Day Lassie, I think this horse, uh, I have the six, nine, uh, Mocha Kiss, one way or another, uh, 11, 12, Choctaw Charlie, Sulve, and if Blow Some Smoke draws in, I, I like that one. So um, I'm six deep, and, and I'm probably not deep enough. Right. I, this is the race where if you do have a strong opinion, good for you, because no, I, I have no conviction whatsoever here yeah i mean my top pick will be derby de lassie um 
Although, I mean, in his last race, he got beat by Choctaw Charlie and Mocha Kiss. So, you know, I don't know how how, how good uh, she is. So, I don't know. I, it's very hard to to narrow it down and have any confidence whatsoever. I, I'm hopefully I get I hopefully I'm alive and I can get home with uh, five or six deep. And that's kind of the way that you want to be going into this race. So, uh, yes, good luck to everyone closing things out in this sequence uh, from what seems manageable prior to this finale. And Jeff, always great to chat with you. You've become one of my uh, closest Twitter follows and friends throughout my time uh, in, you know, on Twitter through Horse Racing Nation. And always a pleasure to get to chat with you about racing and, and pick your brain about how the, the chart is seeing things as well as your interpretation of it. So I appreciate you coming on. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. And Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry I got Christmas. a little Merry Christmas shirt on. The Grinch. <laughs> Right. Oh, you got the Grinch going. I love it. I wore my ugly Christmas sweater yesterday, so I had to switch it out today. Okay. But All right. Yes. Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays, whatever you celebrate. Happy New Year. And thanks for tuning in and good luck this weekend. Bye-bye.